Samsung, proud sponsor of TechBusters. This is TechBusters. Yesterday was the 44th, 45th anniversary of the moon landing, and we think, thought we'd stick with the space theme. So move over to Mark Shuttleworth. Mandela Maseko is here. He beat out thousands of hopefuls from around the world for a space in the, Apollo, the ACE Apollo Space Academy, which means that by the end of next year, he will be the first black African in space. How does that feel, Mandela? You know, even when you mention the title now, it still gives, gives me the chills on all over my body. As it should. Yes, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're going yeah. to space. That's really cool. Yeah, you know, I'm 103 kilometers above Earth, so yeah. that's quite high. Yeah, yeah, that's technically space. So just tell us a little about, a bit about the trip. I mean, you, you get to wear a wonderful jumpsuit like this. <laughs> I'd like a set myself. Apart from wearing the jumpsuit, I'll also have to be in a space shuttle yeah. that will be suborbiting to outer space in the year 2015. You know, um, so I'll be flying under SXC, which stands for Space Expedition Corporation, and I, I got this opportunity via Ex Apollo Space Academy competition, whereby there was a global competition running all over the world. And out of 75 countries, uh, 109 people, I was chosen to be part of the 23 people that will be launching into space, making me the only South African and African on the team. Good for you. Yes. I bet if you weren't an ACE user before that, you are now, right? <laughs> you, bet, you, bet, you bet I am. <laughs> so it's a great excitement. What is the training involved? What do you have to learn to do? Do you have to learn to speak Russian? No, not really. I'm going to go with my accent, accent, uh, Zulu accent, or my African accent. Uh, but six to eight weeks of uh, before or prior launching, I will be faced with the training that includes your G centrifuge. Uh, L-39 Albatross jet, uh, the G-4 simulation, a zero-G flight. It's like top, top Gun. Yeah. It's, yeah, basically. Uh, it's a detailed training that ensures me that uh, I'm fully equipped for my space expedition. And you can take the Gs. Definitely. Like I'm, an X deodorant <laughs> wearer normally. No, a normal day in an X deodorant um, wearer's life. I've took, it, I've took up to 4.4 Gs, you know, so I think I can handle uh, more. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yes, yeah. And what are the things you're going to do? I mean, how long will the space, the space trip be? Let's just go through some of the basics. Uh, SXC, they're trying to make him go into space um, as um, a, a tourist attraction. You know, so in a few years to come, we'll be like, where can I go for a holiday? And you'll be like, let me, let me just go to space. Uh, like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, they started going to the moon, you know. Now the new final frontier is, final frontier is to go to space and come back just for the fun of it. Yeah. So that's SXC what they're trying to do. And I'm part of the Future Generation Astronaut Program, whereby my flight will take up to an hour. It's gonna take off from a normal runway, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna reach an altitude of about 338,000 feet. And then after some time, then come back for the landing. So the whole process from taking, up, from taking off to coming back for the landing takes up to an hour. Okay. So it's a, it's a suborbital flight, you know, the, read, the readers of science fiction will be nodding their head, going, yes, know. predicted by True. Isaac Asimov in the years <laughs> gone by. <laughs> yes, sir. it's a suborbital flight, we won't reach the ISS level. But I suppose ultimately this is a, a way of advancing a plane flight because it's much more efficient for planes to fly in a less dense atmosphere. And I suppose this kind of research will not just lead to people being able to spend an hour in space, but cheaper, faster, more fuel efficient flights and quicker ones to say Australia, Australian six hours, they say. True, true. But, you know, as you mentioned a plane back then, uh, we used to go to uh, uh, traveling by uh, resort to other places, like resort to vehicles to travel. Now we're going to use planes and soon enough we'll be using uh, space shuttles, you know, and we see a, a future whereby we won't be just an Earth race, but we'll an intergalactic race, whereby people will be staying on Mars or, or well, not Pluto, but yeah, on Mars. And well, Earth. listen, I met, I met the guy who started a startup called Mars One Project. Mars One and, Project. And he says it's really easy to get to people as Mars, to Mars, as long as they give up on the foolish idea of ever coming back. Anyway, what we want to know is what are you going to eat in space? Can you take your own biltong? <laughs> 
I was hoping to sneak in my chisanyama or my puro <laughs> horse there, you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I'll get to see. What I know is that uh, we eat inside. We eat from inside a tube. You know, our food is chewed up. You know, where you a toothpaste. Yeah, uh, I know. So I've seen it. I've yeah, seen. I've so bought those, those freeze-dried NASA meals. <laughs> They're really great. So I'll get <laughs> you one of those freeze dries <laughs> ice cream things. Anyway, Manlo Maseka, soon to be the first black African in space.